Archer again. Um, and I'll be very honest as well. It was nice to have a bit of a arcade experience. Is also living out here and sort of daily things going back and forth. So over time, we'll mention little snippets out of out of that sort of part of our daily activity as well. In the city, little every now and again while I'm driving. I'll never forget two stories. The one was, um, ugh, I don't know, I was probably 13, 14. We were driving to, to our farm. We were very fortunate to um, game fit on the side. And as soon as they were game fencing, then the chance of seeing things like giraffe or kudu, uh, you know, the antelopes you could see anywhere, but especially giraffe and zebra and so on, you don't normally see them. <laughs> yeah, the zebra telling us a little something up ahead. So they go look for them. and zebra but, but the real stuff the big stuff the elephants and the lions and the leopards so very fortunate thing so to do this that's actually what the whole point was to do this to drive except maybe rather than doing this on my own i would rather be doing this with people being able to join us from all over the world so big welcome new friend is did see a couple of elephants on the way in this afternoon from from our camp that's what you're going to look for now. December was just telling me of his vehicle. He's, he was just telling me of a and love, big elephants. So, um, promise them, but they eat to leave them. the other game for wild earth uh, even though the guys work closer together normally you only drive certain areas so you have to check with the different guys tell them we are going out and just also get the update so maybe someone found something in the course of the day that is new for this morning so that's basically all we're doing it's just coordinating with area excellency to find game and um, and also very important to keep the the relationship uh, not only healthy but uh, on a professional level in terms of the radio communication so it's a young this is not too far from the area where the wild dogs this morning found themselves some something to eat. Everyone, video wild earth. Uh, I might be making a turn to earth user later on. Uh, any updates? I hope you copy. Thank you. Shadows moved off. Yeah, I might uh, then go in Red Dam down that uh, uh, Marakene Tonga, which is a lovely area, and I'll give you guys a shot if I get anything. That's my Makula Mado's also around there yesterday. Before I'm All right, so no specific updates from the western parts, but we'll go look around there. This is uh, one does sort of dignity towards a vehicle. Yeah. And this is the, the original Wild Earth vehicle. This Land Rover's vehicle is done. Oh, yeah. And she's a little loose in the jaw. She worked hard, you know. But I just like it. She feels like she rolls more with things. Because this is an indication of what we're looking for. You can see punches. See, they've been almost ground off there, you know, they look like they've been at a big uh, grinding stone chew on it. And I'm sure many or almost all of you can guess what this is from. It's from when we were uh, well and crew for the afternoon drive. The elephants were right here and they pushed this tree into the road and there were a couple of vehicles here on their way to Wotella Lodge that couldn't go past. So we managed to quickly 
get a rope on it and put it off the road. The elephants are standing just here. They've moved, I see. I'm guessing they would have moved towards water. That's what I would do. Kamala and their youngsters or their offspring have been sort of quite... Sorry, but I'm going to try and get a window there for you. Let's just see... It's a marula. Eight hours, part of the drive to some extent or another. This is obviously something that will happen. Over the next two months when the babies are born, they're super cute, long legs like this. They will be preyed on quite heavily. So clearly they have their offspring relatively within the same time. It's not, some people will tell you, yes, they have all their babies in four days. You know, all the impala in the world or all the impala in this area. It's not really the case. These are the sort of early arrivals now. Through into December, seems this year, they play when the, when the mating happened. And also... Um, you will get sometimes people saying, yeah, they can delay the birth or they can sort of hold it back. Again, to some extent true, but not in the case of Impala or getting you know, two weeks before the extent the for example, uh, there are really a lot of predators around for some reason and they, and they need to move or uh, there's a bushfire or a massive storm. So they, can, they can restrict the birth to some extent, but it's not something like this is we have found them. Yes, this is the big boy, eh? Hundlov. I love the Shanghai name for elephant. It just sounds like an elephant. Hundlov. Makulu Madoro Hundlov. Big elephant. This is a... the other day six tons plus maybe six and a half seven tons even but probably six or a little bit over give an idea in pounds that is times 2.2 so that's 13,000 give or take a few pounds third is a bush is that bush was a magic worry there goes the second one there goes the second one we'll still talk about magic worry at some stage one now it's got quite a um can you hear that yeah it's got quite a, a, a course is the wrong word but quite a step for the leaf it's break you know if you, if you beat it for instance or run through it but it's it is quite a uh, crisp leaf maybe for another explanation um the biggest use for this actually from a practical point of view uh, the one that i've used it here, if they're your best your best a fire fighting tool unless you've got specific tools that were made if you actually have to go and beat uh, you know beat flames or, or try and suppress fire by by killing the flames this is your first choice of all the, the trees growing there's these sort of lumps of leaves at the end and you can really fight fire well with it these leaves don't burn easily um, and they and they they're tough so you can really beat with it and it works the other use let me try and get a decent It's got to do with um, the fibrous nature of the, the twig itself. Let's just make this a little bit neater. Break. So there you've got your the twig itself or the branch. Let me just make sure you can see it there. Yeah. Then you would take the, the bark off. Now, this is the first time I'm really doing something with this knife. I'll still, this is a very special knife. It was a gift to me from my father, and he's had it for over 40 years. So you'd strip the bark off. Very big in my life in terms, in terms of the bush, and in terms of my openness to nature, and the experiences I've had, and it's played a very big role in my life. It still does. Okay, now you've got the twig. It actually works better sort of deeper into some it's very dry so the moisture in the tree is down to its sort of minimum here by midsummer when it's raining a lot this gets very nice and soft because it gets swollen with moisture so i'm gonna give it a little bit of a tap so you can give it a bit of a chop 
basically one now. Okay, so now we're getting the nice bristly effect. And this is quite tough. This is the actual twigs. If I bring that closer to you with that. How's that? Is that too close? A little bit too close. Mm. How's that? No, it's fine. <laughs> okay, nice dark background. Okay, so this now you could use like this. I hope I didn't eat uh, pepper pizza this afternoon. Do can you hear it? I didn't bring toothpaste along, but you can do um, uh, good ash, especially from hardwoods. Your red bush willow, lead wood, your really really hard woods, they burn into this beautiful clean ash in the bowl. With our toothbrush in tow, so this is another vehicle on the road behind us. We're going to go ahead before them. It's one of the delivery vehicles. <laughs> is three years old. Looks like a little bit of magic worry. Alright. But windy, huh? Yeah. I said <coughs> almost on the horizon all the way through to the south. It's actually got some pretty serious weather building. It's been extremely hot for two days. Last night um, after H's drive the guys had to rush Jack! Hi Jack! So this is, I think I talked a couple of days ago with the wild dogs at Buffalo Dam. I know that even the hardiest of characters, which I know you one of them, was touched by that. So um, nice to have shared that. And, um, Jack was just asking, yes, season. In Palos they've got a rutting season, so a mating season, which is why the lambs are all born within a relatively similar time to each other. And that is around May, June time. But so that's when they move the same time frame. But also the young of Kudu and, and uh, Steenbuck and all the other antelopes. So um, in a way that's the safety for the youngsters. Many baby impalos will be eaten in the next two months by wild dog, leopard, lion. And so our numbers, because there are many of them, many of them will survive. Um, yeah. uh, in a way, I mean, we'll talk about that some other time, but you get K-selective and R-selective breeding approaches. So the one is where um, like a frog lays hundreds of eggs, and sort of leaves them that would be, um, and you put all your effort and energy into ensuring of that two or three individuals in your lifetime. Impala sort of have a mix of those. Per individual, the female puts a lot of energy into one land. So, anyway, just to put that in the back of the mind. Um, Jack, but in short, yes, you will have another lamb, but not this season. Obviously, the gestation for Impala is just over six months, so she will need six months at a minimum to be able to have the lamb. But if she was to mate now, she would be a part of having a lamb. That means that safety numbers aspect is gone. But also winter is not a good time because then the resources are limited. There's not that much food, there's not that much water. It is by far the best for Impala and other herbivores to have the offspring now. Because the rain is coming as we can see today. And uh, this is also any thick grass and lush vegetation so the youngsters can have up relatives. now just because this cloud is getting closer but it still feels like someone's got a hairdryer on the full hot setting pointing into our faces okay sorry guys there's a helicopter looking around here a couple of the land own helicopters they live not too far from here they can fly in quickly if there's something happening at the lodge or they want to come visit or see something that one is flying towards Aratuza Lodge I think can we see it anyway? yeah, there we go looks like it's heading towards Aratuza Lodge maybe Maybe a guest flying in for a little private safari. Right. Here we can see it better. It's a lovely, it's a dull jet ranger. It's a 
I don't know my helicopters that well, but it'd be a lovely view from up there. towards Red Dam a little bit, so that's where Shadow was yesterday, Leopard. Yeah, I know, I'm just from control there as well, saying that that's, it's not a cheap tour. Helicopters, stage one. Sorry to pull so much, but uh, it's probably nothing for the good. But there's a helicopter flying quite low level here, south of uh, Parallel Road, Red, um, Red Dam Junction. So that you guys are aware of it. Yeah, I'm just going to have a little look in there and, and check around the water itself if there's anything around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll give you a shot straight away. Tot. Thank you, Will. Yes, guys, just a reminder, just while we're looking at this little leopard tortoise hiding in the grass there, we are, and if you don't, maybe you've just joined us for the first time today, we are technically in rehearsal stage. We are getting ready for a very exciting thing for, for many of us on many levels, but certainly for Wild Earth, um, for Big Cat Week, a graphic channel, which is a love, very exciting for, I think, all of us. I know from National Geographic sides as well, guys, those of you on the vehicle with us, it's a pleasure to have you with us. We are very excited about all of this and, and, and great to know that you are as well. Um, but as part of this, we decided with us, a hugely exciting concept for all of us, for me personally as well. But as part of that test, we have to test things. And that goes from vehicles to learning the roads, but also a lot for you to uh, yeah, and In other words, increasing the picture so this can be an awesome broadcast by the time Big Cat Week starts. That means there might be some breakups, there might be some delays. We might actually have to cut the stream now. We are now getting into that area where Shadow was yesterday. Quick background, Shadow is a female leopard, almost eight years old. Daughter to Lola. It's quite funny, normally Dugger boys like this don't really care much about vehicles and that. Maybe they smelled something. Maybe, maybe even some... Sorry guys, Brian is just, a, he's, a, he's a super, super nice guy, so... He's a nice guy to poke fun at every night again. I know he doesn't mind. He's a uh, four. He used to work on about it now, but for the ladies out there, you wouldn't mind Brian in front of the camera, I think. So, point is, I don't mind teasing him a bit. I know that he can roll with it quite easily. Guys, a couple of buffalo just trailing off. They were just having a mud bath, cooling down. As we said, it is very, very hot this afternoon. Come back past sort of inlets of this. This is old quarry. Actually, they used to come out of here for some of the roads. Basically, in this drainage line, so in this, it goes up that way, a little riverbed if you want that. Let's have a good look up it. This is a leopard, so this is a funny angle. If I was a leopard, I'd be lying just in there in the shadows. Oh, there's like a little bit of green grass there, some shadow, a bit of a breeze. But then again, I'm not a leopard. Say the 
texture on the grass. She's just going into where Shadow was yesterday morning. More than likely she has left already. I don't think she killed something big. She had a kill there, the guy said, but probably a daker or something like that, which is not much food. Also got a little Ryan said earlier, one of the guides I spoke to is the head ranger in Naratusa. He said the guys didn't go back there to look for her yesterday just because it was such a difficult area. Now we luckily all have one window. There we go. about a thousand lepers here and we wouldn't see them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yawing, um, I'm agreeing with the guys on the road. The Mvula Kom Erg, which is about three different languages, saying the rain, she's coming. The wind just picked up and the clouds are building. I think I'm going to have one more look in there for the leopard. And then, uh, there. I actually think is very likely going to do. We don't want to be caught with our proverbial pants around our ankles because look at that. Yeah. Ooh, it's coming. It's coming in the big way. A big thunderstorm in Africa with lightning, I was going to say fire and lightning, but thunder and lightning and the raindrops can be as heavy, you know, like big drops sometimes, you know, they hurt you when they hit your skin and it is just such, I love the equipment, what did I just see there? I see something down the road and then disappeared. Sands security and anti poaching unit, super nice guy. I met him the other day, he looks like a Lula Moore character. I think we should go for this, yes, sir. So I think the fastest way back to camp for now is the most prudent way to approach this. This is already hitting the ground in the distance.
can start getting that feel of moisture and the brightness. This might be hitting us. Beautiful view. If you look this way, you've got that amazingly deep blue sky. Just look at that. You've still got sunshine to the west, so you've got sunshine hitting us. Lovely, thick, thick. sounds like it changed very suddenly but what's happening up there and what's happening down here is not always the same in other words you've got the front moving in you might be feeling a, a wind the wind that is blowing for us still is blowing for us it's a strong sort of northeast that we quietly all right but i'd rather make that call closer to closer to safety than far away from it Sandy Patch, which is where I believe the wild dog hunt was this morning. This is a bachelor group of males, but there's also some females heard of them. I live with this day to day. They live a free life, a wild life. It's part of that. Oh, there they go. Ooh, nice when they run. I love Impala when they run. Let's go look at this here behind us. It's quite cool. They're also enjoying the bit of coolness in the air suddenly. Now the females being a rugged from whichever mode is dominant. He's the guy who just chased those bachelors off. He was a bit like, hey guys, don't come and mess where you shouldn't be met. This is the man, healthy, strong in his prime. He's probably looking at his horns, I would say, four years old. Maybe maybe five years almost. So really in his physical peak. Casually, but he's he's just reminding them of the guys. This is my area. There's the females. Or the ewes. Now mo those are mostly pregnant stuff. The one you look in the middle there. Really swaying at the branches. that often. Fairly common bird though. It's a little bit overcast so you only get that blue lovely coloration and that orange sort of glossy starling. Running around catching some insects, probably some ants or something running around there. Termites or something of the sorts. The bachelor males, the important the mating opportunities around with those other ones for.
shot uh, very quick looking they didn't see anything nothing had really damn but then uh, this big and wool to camp electric on the back for coping with rain at the moment tracks presumably not too far from where we were looking for her moving along the road so finish whatever they were eating she's stashed her cubs away she's got she's got cubs of about 11 weeks old um, so about three months and um, she'll be eating them somewhere then she's off hunting again for a day or so hello Patty uh, Patty's just wondering, on average, how many miles do we drive per day? Um, well, it can vary great. Uh, Patty, this vehicle, uh, all the important bits work, but uh, things like, you know, the odometer measuring the distance doesn't work anymore, so I don't know exactly how many. But uh, we probably anything between 10 and what is it, a drive? Uh, let me just think about, yeah, probably about that. That could obviously be influenced by what we see, in other words, if you go out and you find a leopard quite soon and it's doing nice things and you stay with it, you might only do, you know, one or two or three miles for the day. But then on other days when it's really quiet and going on, something in there, you might find other days where you might be doing 10 miles or 20 miles. I doubt you'll ever do more than about 40 kilometers a, a drive. Now that would really be covering you know, 25, 28 miles. Something in that region. One of the things when you get in and you, and you have coming from the eastern side, like you do now, you still have sun in the west and you get this amazing light. Just look at that sky, it's spectacular. It really highlights everything in the foreground because it's so. Could you up ahead here? Try and just get them, or get us on the right side of them relative to the light. The beautiful, dark, deep blue background. And that's a lovely view. Let me just go back. There's a perfect little frame there. Look at her. Look at that. Against that beautiful background. And that's a kudu female or a cow. And she's got an odd little plant growing low down and eating the leaves from that. They prefer leaves. parts of this area of this part of the world will be getting good rain this afternoon. It's a young hey, this at bush. That young bull was about a year old. Could it normally have the offspring uh, not as early as Impala, probably slightly later. Stunning antelope. I absolutely love kudu. Let's go closer again. Mm, it's a beautiful view of them. All the ears, you can see big ears, they're great. Great hearing. That's quite jumpy, full of energy. Thing. Getting on the termite mound, that little bit of extra elevation. Maybe they can see a bit further, look around. Guys, windy weather like this is potentially uh, not nerve wracking a choice of work because all this movement that you get from the wind, all the leaves and grasses and shrubs, everything's moving. Lots of noise as well. So if you were a predator, that would be an opportunity that you could that you could um see that. Let's stick with these good. Jumping is not 
not because of us, it's just because they sort of getting into the swing of things. There's definitely a storm coming. It now looks like it might be heading our way again more than I thought a few minutes ago. We're literally sitting in like a, it's like a hole above us in the sky. Oh. We're surrounded by clouds, but especially towards the, the north here. around for now it's beautiful light I'm enjoying these kudu nice bit of life in them and uh, if the rain comes which I think it's going to do we'll be running for home and we will get ourselves under a roof and as soon as we get that it'll be nice just to answer chat a little bit what we're doing what's going to be happening in the next few weeks where we are maybe if you're new with us feel free to send a few through and we'll answer a few of those while uh, undercover, but for now we're close to camp and close. I'm gonna go. Thunder, I saw a bit of lightning. The kudus have decided they're going towards thicker stuff. Let's follow them a bit more. While we follow them, Tony from Ireland. Hello, Tony. I love the Irish accents, one of my favorite accents. We met someone the other day in camp. They had this beautiful Irish, what do you call it, lot or something to, to his accent. Anyway, Tony's just asking if antelope grow their horns back or he specifically asked you about impala that we saw earlier could do now if they break the horns um tony no it's your deer do in fact many of the deer as you know they grow their horns um, seasonally sometimes even but um it's a, it's a different uh, position I mean, it's actually so you actually have a horn or a bone growth from the skull and is then covered in this sheath of keratin or sheath of hair really the hardened hair which is different from the material that, that deer horns grow from um, and if it breaks it doesn't uh, grow back so um, if Paula loses a horn we also want to at some stage or another drive then they just have whatever remains okay there the kudus are happier now they're going into thicker bush that's the kind of habitat they they're happy with or happy in Driving around the little circles around quarantine for now. Never know what else might pop out here. Jeez, big I love this. All right, guys. As we mentioned earlier, we are doing tests and we're doing the satellite test to, amongst other places, Washington for Nat Geo. And uh, we're going to test. If we just have to rain, we just so you know about it beforehand. 